Hello, it's Scott Manley here. It's been just over two weeks since DART made its fatal plunge into the asteroid Dimorphos, and NASA has finally released some concrete results. I mean, beyond the fantastic images that we got back from the spacecraft moments before its demise. Now we've seen the results, we can say for certain that scientists made a massive mistake when they decided to meddle with killer asteroids. But it's okay, it's a mistake in the right direction. Remember, this mission was basically a technology demonstrator. In addition to just showing you could steer a spacecraft into an asteroid at 6.6 .6 kilometers per second, they wanted to show that the solar panels, the engine, the antenna were all, you know, fully spaceflight capable for interplanetary spacecraft. But the big question the asteroid people wanted to know was just how efficiently would this couple to the asteroid? When it hit, would the plume of stuff that it threw off add extra thrust and deflect the asteroid more than would be expected for just the mass of the spacecraft alone. And you know, I was actually surprised at how quickly we got these results, because determining the effect of this requires doing looking at the object and measuring brightness changes. And when you have an impact like this, it changes the brightness a lot. So this is an image from Lichia Cube, the little secondary satellite that flew by. And this is what it looked like a moment later as that cloud of dust was lofted up and reflected a lot of the light. Now, we actually got a better look at this sequence. Lichia Cube was lagging behind by about three minutes. That means that when the impact happened, it was about a thousand kilometers away. This is a pretty narrow field of view in this camera, and you see it flashing up and getting brighter. I actually wanted to do some work on this sequence, so I used some frame morphing, matched this, uh, the frames together, and uh, I added a flash at the exact moment. So this is running about three times normal speed, and that lens flare totally artificial because we don't see it, but it showed you when the event would happen. Um, so anyway, the idea is that this impact threw up this dust and that would modify the brightness. And I thought that the brightness would be so bright and changing in such a way that it would be very hard to detect the light curve. So you would use the light curve to measure the period of orbit of the satellite around the body. It's orbiting around once every 12 hours. And the idea was they wanted to speed up this orbit by slowing the object down because, of course, orbital mechanics is backwards like that. We would see as it was orbiting because you would see it when it passed through, when the a moon passed through the shadow of the parent and when the moon cast a shadow on its parent. And so I think it's a huge credit to the astronomers that they were able to extract a usable light curve even with this obnoxious cloud floating around getting in their way. So the mission had hoped to get a change in the orbit of at least 72 seconds. That would be like a worst case. But when astronomers measured it, they found the period had changed by a staggering 32 minutes. That's almost 27 times the worst case ex expectation. You can see in this diagram, the gray arrows is where they would expect the eclipses to be. The yellow arrows were where they saw them. And you can see that the yellow arrows get progressively earlier and earlier. And in fact, after two weeks, they've synced up again because it's more than one orbit behind. That's a very big result. And it's not, not just optical light curves, they got radar data, which incidentally shows that it hasn't turned into a, a planetary ring. You can see Didymos was detected and Dimorphos is there. And when they did the math based on the previous orbit and where it should be, it was 90 degrees away from where it was expected. So the beautiful thing about this is you can actually see how far we have moved the object along its orbit. In real terms, that's changed the velocity by about 640 meters per day. And when you consider that the Earth is about 6,400 kilometers, that means you could move it an Earth-sized distance in 10,000 days. So roughly 30 years. 30 years is sort of like, you know, timeline that human, you know, humans could actually do something about an object like this. So yes, this has actually proved that it is a viable technique and could potentially be scaled up for larger objects or shorter windows. Of course, the flip side that most people aren't talking about is that there's actually more asteroids that are currently missing Earth that could actually be knocked onto an Earth colliding trajectory. So it's really good news if you're a supervillain or say, Marco Inaros uh, wanting to get revenge against the Earth. 
So now there's still a lot of work to be done on this. We really want to characterize that impact plume and figure out what goes on because, you know, this is one example. This is one reference point for future studies and simulations. Uh, this uh, is an image from Lichia Cube as it sort of just flew past and you can see the cone of the mat of material on the small moon on the left. Now, what I find interesting is that little dark area in the cone between the asteroid and the start of the cone. Is that an area that is just shadowed or, or is it an area where the material has stopped flowing? At this point, it looks like that is less than 100 meters from the asteroid. So that's if that, that area corresponds to material that is moving at less than a meter per second given that this was three meters at uh, three minutes after the impact that image is from this longer sequence that's currently downloaded they're still downloading images from uh, lichia cube right now but this is coming in and flying past uh, you can see the the dust uh you know spokes or whatever jets coming out from this and then there's this moment as the camera has to flip around and I, I hope we get more images from this point because it just transitions across to like almost the other side. And this is then the camera, uh, Lichia Cube, moving away and watching the spacecraft, sorry, the asteroid almost backlit at this point. I think you can get a better idea of like a better sort of three dimensional idea of what you're seeing just by ping ponging the images back and forth as we go through this sort of close approach sequence. Um, obviously, this is still a close approach from like 80 kilometers. This camera is a very narrow field of view because, well, it's a spaceship and that's how you design spacecraft cameras. I'm not sure if we're going to get any more data from that sequence, but there's probably some enough there to start getting you know, some three-dimensional information on the shape of those jets. Again, this is transitioning around to, you know, the backlit side. The sun is, I think, about 45 degrees off down to the bottom left there. And the scientist also shared this contrast stretch composite so you can see the jets. And there's a lot of structure in there. There's a bit of waviness. And that indicates that the jets have been changing direction as they were spraying out material into space. Now, how does that happen? Well, one possibility is that it's related to the structure of the asteroid being a rubble pile, a mixture of large boulders and small gravel and various sizes in between. And they did an impact experiment into a sand gravel aggregate like this. And if you watch it, yeah, you can sort of see these wavy jets forming, right? You can see a lot of stuff going on here, but the one to look at is on the front left side coming towards us. So you'll see this sort of jet coming up and right at the base of it, you'll see a boulder or a relatively large chunk of stone getting moved around. And as that rolls out the way, the direction of the jet is changing. So this is a totally plausible reason to explain the structures that we saw in the jets coming off of Dimorphos. So yeah, there's a lot of work to do, but this is a watershed moment. Prior to this, humanity had ideas about how they might save the world from you know what the universe had intended. Now we know that humanity has the ability to change the destiny of the planet Earth. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.